Hello, this is a very quick introduction to Sigma Plot. This is Sigma Plot version 13, which is the uh, version which is available as a site license at King's College London. And this is a very quick introduction to how to create a very simple bar graph. There are many ways of entering data into Sigma Plot, and we'll go into this in other tutorials. But more often than not, you'll be presented with the need to present data in a bar graph or a histogram where you've got an n number, let's say an n of four or five data points, where you need to average these data points, create a bar with a standard error of the mean or standard deviation, and you may have two or three of these groups. So for instance, you might have um, men and women in heights and, uh, or weight or power output or something over a number of different options. So what we're going to do here is we're going to enter some data into the sheet, and this is the sheet that the notebook that uh, Sigma Plot will open up when you first open it. It's called Data 1, but that's because we haven't labeled it with anything else or saved this notebook yet. So let's just say we've got five data points from a group, and we're just going to type in some data points. There we are. And we've got five data points from a second group, so let's type in those data points. And we've got five data points from a third group. And we want to plot these data points as three separate bars, and we want the means of these data points to be plotted, and we want a standard deviation to be plotted of these three means. So this is the standard way that you might enter data, for instance, into GraphPad, Prism, or Cricut Graph, or one of the other popular graphing programs. So to create a graph of these, you go to the Create Graph tab, which was already open on the screen in front of us, and we click on Bar. We can then choose a type of bar, and we're just going to go to a simple vertical bar in this case. Then you get the option of the format of your data. Immediately, it jumps way too many steps forward, uh, in my opinion, and it should be asking a lot simpler data. So we need to go back one step. We actually want a simple error bar. We want to plot data as Y values with error bars. So we choose Simple Error Bar, and then we click Next. And you can see here what it's done, because this is my default setting, is the symbol values can either be the arithmetic error bar, column means, row means, category means, column medians, etc., etc. But we're going to choose column means, and the symbol value will be plotted as the mean of the column. So for instance, if I then choose Standard Deviation, or standard error from this second drop-down box, I'm going to be plotting means plus or minus standard deviation. You've actually got a choice. You can choose separate, uh, independent, upper and lower error values. So you might want to, to have two standard deviations up and one standard deviation below if that's what your data requires. But on the whole, we tend to plot the same deviation up and down. So we're going to choose standard deviation up and standard deviation down, and then press Next. It's then going to ask us where our data are coming from, and we have many Y data. In other words, we have many different groups, in this case, three different groups. So we click on Next. It's then asking us to select where the groups come from. So we click on 1. Set 1 is column 1. Set 2 is column 2. And set 3 is column 3. You can click on the columns like I've done, or you can choose a drop-down list and choose column 3. So now we've selected set 1, set 2, and set 3 as column 1, column 2, and column 3, and we can press the Finish button. This then plots a graph for us where it has the means of these groups, and you can see this is group 1, group 2, and group 3 means, with the standard error going up. The standard error at the moment only goes up, and we definitely asked it to go up and down, so to change this we can double-click on the error bar, and we can ask it to go up and down by choosing both and then close that window and you'll now see the error bar goes up and down on our graph. The labels here are still labeled 1, 2 and 3. If you double click on the labels you can choose series and it'll then write January, February and March. Of course you can then change this series to anything you want, to A, B, C, etc., and then have them in the legend. Or if you want to, you can choose them from one of the other columns. 
So for instance, I can go back to my data and let's choose column five. I can call group A. So I've got three groups called group A, group B and control. That's one, two and three. Go back to my graph, double click on the thing down the bottom and choose column five. Close that and you can see now it's labeled in group A, group B and control. So Sigma plot does what it does ever so slightly differently, um, but it's worth remembering that it can do everything you want it to do in the same way that most other graph programs can. Uh, rather like Excel, it seems to produce a little legend for every graph, even if you've only got one data set, so we'll delete that by right-clicking and choosing Hide. And it's also put a title, which we'll right-click and choose Delete. We can then label our X data and our Y data, so we'll call our Y data uh, measurement. And we'll call our X data groups. We could, if you want to, get rid of these lines as well by right-clicking and choosing Hide. And now we have a nice bar graph. If you want to format the bar graph with different fills for each of these bars, for instance control, you may want to be clear. Just click on the bar, double click, and you can choose what fill colour you want it to have. So we can choose a white fill. Because we stipulated this was a simple bar graph and we weren't using groups, we were just doing means of columns, if you change one colour, all the colours change. However, what you can do is you can choose different fills. You can go down to pattern fills, for instance, and choose different fill patterns, or you can choose different hashes, etc., etc. So you have got some control, but if you want the graph to look a little bit more posh with different colours in each one, you need to select a different graph type, which I'll use in a different tutorial. So that's a very simple way of making a simple bar graph in Sigma plot. Of course, once we've created our graph, we may want to run some simple analysis of these three data points. And now we're going to run a one-way ANOVA comparing these three data sets. We go back to the data and we go to the Analysis tab. We're going to use the drop-down list here to choose the right test, in which case it's a one-way ANOVA. And we click on one-way ANOVA. We then click on Run. It'll ask us where the data comes from. It'll ask us if the data are raw or processed or normalized, etc. We are going to use raw data and click on next because these data are the original samples. So it's then asking us where the data come from. Well, there's some of the data, there's some more data, and column three is our third set of data. So we have three sets of data, column one, column two, and column three, and we'll press finish. It's then going to ask us that once it's done the ANOVA test, does it want us to do a multiple comparison test? And of course a post hoc comparison test is quite important with one-way ANOVA. And we have a choice which one we can use here. I'm going to use Bonferroni in this case, and I'm going to do an all pairwise comparison. So it's going to compare group A with group B, group A with control, group B with control, etc. And press finish. It then breaks up our results in the one-way ANOVA report. It tells us our standard values you'd expect to see. And then down the bottom, it does a pairwise comparison. And it tells us that column 3 versus column 1 has a P of less than 0.05. Column 3 versus column 2 has a P of less than 0.05. And column 2 versus column 1, lo and behold, has a P of less than 0.05. Um, what I've done, of course, is I've purposely entered data that I knew would be statistically different, and I've done a test then to show it. So now you can go back to your graph, clicking on the Graph Page tab and clicking on the Text Annotation tool, we can put a star above this bar and then move that into place. Let's grab that star, there we are have that sitting over that one. Actually, we'll make that a bit bigger as well because it seems very, very small. So let's make it 22 point. There we go. And then we'll copy and paste that star and put him above the other one. And then, of course, we'd write in the legend that star represents P is less than 0.05 versus 
versus group A or any way around you want to do it. So that's a very simple way of then doing your basic statistical analysis using sigma plot on a bar graph showing averages plus or minus standard deviation from a simple data set.